welcome back. In our previous video, we talked about uh, congruent chords. Well, now we're going to work with congruent chords, but also congruent arcs and congruent what we call central angles. Okay, so we're going to define some things. So a matter of definition here, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So angle ABC is a central angle. This is circle B. Okay, so angle ABC is a central angle. And its intercepted arc is arc AC. Okay, so it's opening up. Angle ABC opens up and intercepts arc AC. That's its minor arc. The opposite side, the outside or the obtuse angle here is its major arc. So we have a minor arc and a major arc. Definition of a semicircle. A semicircle is an arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. So if this were circle B again, our chord XY would pass through the center of the circle and the red arc here would be a semicircle. Okay, and we could go the other way too. So our semicircle could be arc um, arc x z y could be our semicircle, or we can go the other way. Okay, put point A on the circle. We could call that arc x a y or arc y a x. It just tells us the direction that we're going. And as I mentioned previously, a minor arc is an arc of a central angle whose measure is less than a semicircle. So our minor arc from figure one is arc AC is the minor arc. And the major arc is an arc whose central angle whose measure is greater than a semicircle. So I'm going to need a point over here so I can identify which direction I'm going. So our major arc is arc AXC. That is the major arc. Its measure is more than 180 degrees. So it's a major arc. And the measure of a minor arc is always equal to the measure of its central angle. So if angle B equals 42 degrees, or we could call it angle ABC equals 42, then I know arc AC is also 42 degrees. Subsequently, the major arc is 360 minus the minor arc. So arc AXC from up here at the beginning, up at the top, arc AXC is equal to 360 minus 42. My arithmetic is correct. That would be 318 degrees. Congruent arcs have both the same measure in degrees and length. And the length of an arc, that's really the portion of the perimeter. Okay, so remember that the perimeter of a circle is the circumference or calculated by 2 pi r or the circumference is diameter times pi. So length is in feet, inches, or centimeters, and measure is in degrees. So real quick sample problem. If we have a 
central angle of use something easy 60 degrees and our radius is 4 well arc AB here it measures 60 degrees but its length is really one-sixth of the whole circumference right so one-sixth of the circumference because it's 60 out of 360 degrees or one-sixth of 8 pi because our diameter our radius is 4 so our diameter is 8 so 4 thirds pi we'll call it inches or units that would be now that is our length okay so our measure is in degrees and our length is in feet or inches it's a portion of the perimeter or in our case the circumference let's move on to some of the theorems here and work with our central angles so if we have two central angles and these could be within the same circle or congruent circles it doesn't matter but if our central angles are congruent then our corresponding arcs must be congruent well that's pretty easy to think about if the the radiuses are the same and we cut the same portion of the circle that makes sense that those those arcs would be the same well the converse is also true if I've got congruent arcs then going back my central angles are congruent so congruent central angles imply congruent arcs and conversely congruent arcs imply congruent central angles well congruent central angles also cut congruent chords so if these two central angles are congruent that means our red chords must also be congruent and if you think about that that makes sense if I have a wider and wider angle it's gonna make for a longer and longer chord a shorter angle a shorter chord well if the circles are congruent or the same circle that's gonna make sense that that congruent central angles are going to cut congruent chords well again the converse of that is true if my chords are congruent that means my central angles have to be equal width or equal opening so then my central angles are going to be congruent so the converse of that is true if I have congruent chords those babies are congruent then Yes, I can work my way back in and get congruent central angles. So then those two angles will be congruent. So what's missing? Congruent central angles imply congruent arcs. Congruent central angles imply congruent chords. So maybe we can eliminate the central angles and work with the, the chords and the arcs. And if you guessed that was the case, you are correct. If we have congruent arcs, if we cut the same arc and they're congruent, then our chords must be congruent. So it's not a very good diagram, but congruent arcs imply congruent chords. And then again, the converse of that is true. If the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent. Here I have a couple of, oh, that wasn't a very good chord, but doing that again, nice size chord there. So if those two arcs are congruent, well, the chords that they cut have to be congruent and vice versa. If the chords are congruent, then those arcs have to be congruent and now that arc has to be congruent to that arc 
So lots of theorems, but really only one concept here, um, or three concepts, just the concept and its converse. And we'll get some practice with this when I see you in class.